Hello neighbors and welcome back to the Monroe Style Jamming Workshop. Today we're looking at Clinch Mountain Backstep in a beginning melody form. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to the Stanley Brothers play Clinch Mountain Backstep. There you have it. What a great tune. So what we need to do is just get that tune in our head. All right, and this is gonna be the bare bones, eighth note version of it. it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So those are the eighth notes when you add the upstroke to each of those downstrokes it sounds like this Like that okay so as you can hear you can just take that eighth note melody add your upstroke and you will have a nice melody version we'll also get into the low version which is going to sound like this we'll wait a little while to get there okay so let's look at the first line okay we're thinking about the way that the chord structure goes let's just talk about that real quick all right so it sounds like this one two three four a a a a a a e e a a a a a e a a a a a a a a e e a a a a e e a a okay so as you notice there you can do the e chord a couple of different ways people will play it different ways that's something that you want to keep mindful of but uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. So there is a split bar, and we'll talk about that. So you have four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. All right, that's your first bar. Second bar, one, two, three, four. So two beats of A, two beats of E. The second half of the A part, A, 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 A. One full bar of A. And then you can either go right to the, the E there for two beats, E, E, A, A or you can play one A and then one E. A, E, A, A. Take your pick there. If you're playing in a jam session, you might need to listen and look to where people are putting that E chord in there and sync up with them. If it's off, it's not really a big problem. Okay, that's the first part. So here's the second part. A, 
Okay, and that's the first part of, that's the first half of the B part. That's got the back step in it. All right, this is one extra beat, which is not usually in the square uh, form of a chord progression, okay? It's got A, two, three, four, A, two, three, E, two. Okay, it's a little complicated. So you have the first bar, one, two, three, four. That's the first bar. Then you have A, two, three, then you go to E for two. That second E chord there is the back step part, all right, which makes the meter unsquare. It's a little complicated, but it's just one extra beat there. It's kind of one of the fun things about the tune that makes it special and unique. All right, so the back half of the B part is the same as the back half of the A part, okay? A, 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 E, A, A. Again, you can go to that E for two or just one. You don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so that's the chord structure. All right, let's look at the first line of the tune. All right. This is the first line of the A. Okay. Da, 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 da. We're gonna count it. One and two and three and four and. All right, we're using eighth notes arranged uh, by counting the quarter notes as where the bass plays. People talk about the time in a couple different ways. Again, this is a little complicated, but basically what you need to know is that we're counting the strong beats. We're not counting the back beats, okay? So where the bass plays, one, two, three, four, that is gonna be our quarter note count, all right? So we're playing two eighth notes for each of those quarter notes. All right, it's a little complicated. Don't worry about it. Just wanna tell it to you so if it's helpful, they can be helpful. All right, so we're starting on the fifth fret of the E, third fret of the E, open E, back to the third fret, back to the open, down to the third fret of the A, then open A twice. All right, one and two and three and four and, all right, that's your first line. So as you're going along, just stop the video and work that out until you get it, okay? and continue to do that for the duration of the video, okay? So here's a second line. All right. All right, put one extra note in there to keep the eighth note steady. One and two and three and four and... All right, so fifth fret of the E, third fret, open E, down to the fifth fret of the A, and then to your open E for one, two, three, four, you have four open E's there, all right? Let's put the first and the second line together. Here we go, ready, go. All right, so the third line is the same as the first line. All right. Now the fourth line, this is the ending line, sounds like this. All right, so we're starting on the fifth fret of the A, third fret of the A, open A, down to the fifth fret of the D, and then back to the open A for four downstrokes, all right? One and two and three and four and... All right, so that's our whole A part. All right, let's take it from the top. Ready, go. That. All right, so I made a little mistake in there. I hit the uh, the fifth fret by accident there. That's okay. You know, if you make a little mistake here or there, everybody does it occasionally, and uh, that's okay. Uh, just make sure that you're trying to go for Now, you can add your upstroke to each of those downstrokes, and you'll have the 16th notes. It'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, 
one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. Okay, so let's talk about the end of the A part. There's just gonna be one note that's different from the 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 first A part. So the form goes A A. B, B. The B part's got the back step in it twice. All right. So at the end of the A part, the second time you play the A part, you're going to have one pickup note to the B part. So instead of going a three and four and at the end of the A part, like you do on the first A part, you're going to play one second fret of the D note. All right. So you have your three open A's. That is going to be the second fret of the D on the and of four. All right, so here is the last A part with that pickup note in it. One, two, three, four. So the last eighth note in the A part is going to be your pickup note to the B part. It's going to be the second fret of the D. All right, so here's how the B part sounds. All right, so again, you're gonna be playing the back half of the A part for the back half of the B part. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right. So we're gonna start with our pickup note, which is the last note of the A part, and we're gonna go into the B part. So it's that and of four, second fret of the D. The downbeat for the B part starts on the open A. One and two and three and four and. That is our first line of the B part. One and two and three and four and. All right, so you're starting on the open A. One and two and three stroke, excuse me, four strokes on the open A. Then up to the fifth fret of the A, third fret of the A, open A, down to the fifth fret of the D. All right, one and two and three and four and, that's the first line of the B part. Here's the second line. One and two and three and four and five and. So it's very rare that we would count five beats there. That's the back step part, which makes it special. All right, so one and two and three and four and little back step there. So start on the open A. One and two and four strokes there. Up to the fifth fret of the A. Third fret of the A. Open A. Down to the fifth fret of the D. All right, that's our first line. Here's the second line. One and two and three and four and five and. All right, so we're starting the second line. Open A. One and two that's four strokes there, up to the third fret of the A, fifth fret of the A, and then to the open E, four strokes there. That's our extra back step beat there, the fifth beat in that bar, if you want to think about it like that. One and two and three and four and five and. Okay, so let's put those two lines together, starting with the pickup note coming out of the last A part. Here we go, one, two, ready, go. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five and. From there, you go to the back half of the A part. And again, you're gonna play that pickup note to the second B part, second fret of the D. All right, and then you repeat the whole B part. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and the end of the B part, you just end on the open A. And if you're gonna repeat it, you just go right back to the A part. Okay, so let's play the whole B part, starting with the pickup note on the and of four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and repeat.
repeat the B part and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all right now let's add our upstroke to each of those downstrokes turning the eighth notes into sixteenth notes then we'll have a more uh, regular kind of, you know, bluegrass mandolin and 16th note texture. All right, so starting from the and of four, we're also gonna play the, the uh of four, four E and uh, that's gonna be our upstroke now. So here we go, it might be a little bit complicated, but just stick with it, use your ears to listen. One and two and three and four. And a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a five E and a one B part with the 16th notes. Let's play the whole tune. Here we go. One, two, ready, and go. And one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three. Repeat the A part. So make sure you got all that, and then we can move on to the low part. It's gonna be the exact same note path as we played in the higher octave. We're just gonna be playing it one octave down. All right, so instead of starting on the fifth fret of the E, we're gonna start on that same note, which is an A note, the open A, all right? So you might be able to use your ears and just follow what you've learned with the melody in the lower octave. I'll explain it all as we go along. It's gonna sound like this, starting with the eighth notes. exact same melody path except we're not going to have that pickup note that we had to the B part okay you can play uh, the open G for the pickup note which is just fine for the and of four coming out of the A part and also right before the B part re repeats that's a good substitution sometimes you have to do that when you're changing octaves all right so again it's the same note path Octave lower. All right, starting on the open A, fifth fret of the D, second fret of the D, fifth fret of the D, second fret, down to the fifth fret of the G, down to the second fret of the G for two. That's your first line. One and two and three and four and. All right, second line. All right, open A, fifth fret of the D, second fret, open D, and then back to the second fret of the D four strokes. All right, once again, let's put those together. Ready and go. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, 
So you notice there that I went ahead and repeated the first line for the third line. That's what you do, because we already learned that. And then here is the last line. All right, so open D, fifth fret of the G, second fret, open G, and then back to the second fret of the G for four. All right. Let's play all that. That's the first A part. Ready and go. And two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right, that just repeats for the second A part. Right there, we were ending on the fourth beat of the last bar. Right there, you can continue to play the second fret of the G or use your open G for a pickup note. All right? So that would be like this. Last line. All right, that would be where we did this on the first part. That second fret of the D can now be the open G in the lower octave. All right, B part is gonna sound like this. Explain that note for note. So we're starting on the second fret of the G. One and two and four strokes there. Up to the open D. Fifth fret of the G. Second fret G. Open G. That's our first line. One and two and three and four and. Here's our second line. It's the one with the back step. One and two and three and four and five and. Let's explain that. Four notes on the second fret of the G. One and two up to the 5th fret of the G, open D, and you got 4 and 5 and 4 strokes on the 2nd fret of the D, that's the back step part, the two first ones, and the extra beat there, two more of those, okay, and then you go into the back half of the A part for the back half of the B part. your open G for the pickup note or just continue to play on the second fret of the G. Totally good. You just repeat that. At the end of the B part, you just stay on that A note, second fret of the G, and you can repeat the low A part if you're going to go into it again or go back to the high octave. All right, so now let's add our 16th notes, the upstroke to each of those downstrokes. It's gonna sound like this. And you can start from the pickup note. Let's just say we're gonna start with a pickup note. So open G, you'll play it down and then up instead of just the one downstroke. There you go, one, two, and three, and four. Now, let's play the whole high part, let's play the whole low part, all right? So we're gonna play the whole tune two times. A, A, B, B, high, and then A, A, B, B, low, all right? Here we go, one, and two, and three, and go, and. Yeah. 
As you can see, I made a couple of small errors there, a couple of little mistakes there. And I could easily stop the video and make a little edit there, but I'm not going to because I want to show you what's probably gonna happen here and there, okay? But the thing is, if you get the arrangement in your mind and you make a little mistake, a little deviation, note-wise, it's not such a big deal. If you make the mistake, don't try to go back and play the note you missed, just keep going with the rhythm. That's as that's as absolutely important as playing it perfectly. It's actually more important to be able to recover when you make a mistake because as Bill Monroe said, just because you made a mistake doesn't mean the music stops, okay? And that's one of the ways that the music evolves is, is the mistakes. You might make a mistake that you actually like, all right? So the most important thing that I wanna communicate here is to get that melody in your head. I said 1A and 1B there, but to be able to hum that can be very helpful. So I would encourage all y'all to learn how to hum it and maybe even think about that when you're not having your mandolin with you. Just think about how the tune goes. It can be very helpful to learn to count and play at the same time. It can be very helpful to learn to sing and play at the same time. These are more advanced skills, but they will help you a lot in your journey. Uh, from my perspective, okay? All right, so just a couple of little bonus notes that we can talk about here. Uh, you know, a more advanced version would be, uh, which has more 16th notes changing notes than just the eighth note and 16th note version, okay? One of the most prominent ones that you'll hear Da, 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 or ba, 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 ba. So we were, we were just going ba, 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 ba. Just totally good And this is not meant to confuse you So don't worry about any of this Until you get what we've learned in the very beginning But if you, add a, if you want to add a couple more notes So after that third fret of the E One me and a two E and a After the A uh of to me and uh, the uh of two there, you can play this, which has an upstroke on the fifth fret of the A, open E, upstroke on the fifth fret of the A, third fret of the A, and you can double that if you're playing your 16th notes, then down to your open A on your first line. All right. You can also come back to the fifth fret of the A, a little more complicated. This is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more intermediate, but I want to give it to you if it's good for you. You can also slide from five to seven into that E. line and you can slide into the A. All right, so that's a little option there. You can also do that on the, the low part. It's not as easy to do the, the coming back to the D note on the low part. But you can do it. I would 
probably recommend just hanging on that fifth fret of the G for the low part. <laughs> into that there's a lot of different things you can do you can start to noodle around all right as david davis was telling us in our last monroe style jamming workshop the zoom all right noodle around follow your ear if it sounds good it is good that's what red my father says if it sounds good it is good all right but this bare bones version of the melody is going to be the basis of what you need to proceed with the more complicated, advanced Monroe style jamming that we're gonna get into on the next video. Okay, so hope you enjoy the Clinch Mountain Backstep and we'll see you on the next one.